Island Southeast Asia has one of the largest and most intriguing hominin fossil records in the world, and evolutionary studies suggest that prehistoric human fossils are hiding in plain sight in Southeast Asia. Indeed, many evolutionary naturalists of the late 19th century proposed that Asia, not Africa, was the birthplace of humankind because it is halfway between Europe and America and offers the best dispersal routes throughout the world, contrary to what English naturalist Charles Darwin had proposed in his 1871 book Descent of Man. Homo erectus soloensis, also known as Solo Man, is a subspecies of Homo erectus that last lived in Java, Indonesia, between 117,000 and 108,000 years ago, during the late Pleistocene. This is the last record of the species comes from this population. Compared to more archaic Joven Homo erectus, the solo man remains exhibit more derived traits, most notably a larger brain, an elevated cranial vault, lessened post-orbital constriction, and less developed brow ridges. 100 years ago, one archaeologist made an unsuccessful attempt to persuade the scientific community in Europe that he had discovered an upright walking ape man. They largely rejected his findings, labeling them as those of a deformed non-human ape. Nevertheless, the ape man of Java aroused academic curiosity. In contrast to the Neanderthal, who is still well known for his cultural or biological conflict with the ancestors of modern humans, Solo Man did not find a real place in taxonomy and in the scientific debate for a very long time. Are there two distinct trends in human evolution, one in Europe, where Neanderthals first appeared, and the other in Asia, where the oldest human fossils are estimated to date back over 1.5 million years? Some researchers hold the belief that this group of hominins belong to ancient Homo sapiens, but the majority of paleoanthropologists regard them as evolved Homo erectus. More recently, it has been proposed that they could be the enigmatic Southern Denisovans, also referred to as the Sunda Denisovans. They are also sometimes referred to as Sunda Homo erectus, but for consistency we will refer to them as Homo erectus soloensis or solo man. Based on the glaring absence of any other remains at the sites besides the skullcap, cannibalism and ritual headhunting have also been proposed as explanations. The historical headhunting and cannibalism practices among some contemporary Indonesian, Australian, and Melanesian groups, which at the time were thought to have descended from these Homo erectus populations, supported this. The unique combination of dark skin, blonde hair and blue eyes found in some Melanesians could have been a result of introgression from this group, raising an interesting scenario. The Solo River Terrace was deposited over 316 to 31,000 years ago, then Gandong Terrace 141 to 92,000 years ago and the Homo erectus bone bed 117 to 108,000 years ago, according to the first thorough chronology of the site, which was published in 2020. This date would imply that Solo Man is the final population of Homo erectus, and they had not interacted with modern humans. However, there may have been a sizable population of Homo erectus soloensis before the volcanic eruption that led to their interment, judging by the sheer number of specimens deposited at Ngandong at the same time but it is difficult to estimate population with certainty. It is unknown where the southern shoreline and the mouth of the Solo River would have been, given that the Ngandong site was some distance from the island's northern coast. Using uranium-thorium dating, the Solo Man remains were first radiometrically dated in 1988 and then again in 1989, giving a wide error range of 200 to 30,000 years ago. Then, using electron spin resonance dating and uranium thorium isotope ratio mass spectrometry, Solo Man teeth were dated in 1996 to a period between 53.3 and 27,000 years ago. This indicates that Solo Man outlived Asian continental Homo erectus by at least 250,000 years, and was contemporaneous with modern humans in Southeast Asia, who migrated between 55 and 50,000 years ago. The Solo Man remains were redated to roughly 70 to 40,000 years ago in 2008, after gamma spectroscopy on three of the skulls revealed uranium leaching. This would still leave open the possibility that Solo Man lived at the same time as modern humans. T.E. Solo Man's skull is oval shaped, with thick brows, protruding cheekbones, and a prominent bone bar wrapping around the back. The brain volume ranged from 1,013 to 1,251 cubic centimeters, which is quite large compared to the average brain volume of 1,270 cubic centimeters for modern males, and 1,130 cubic centimeters for modern females. 
one specimen, possibly a female, may have stood 5 feet 2 inches tall and weighed 112 pounds. Males were likely much larger than females. Although much less primitive, Solo Man resembled the Java Man who had previously lived in Java in many ways. Along with other megafauna like elephants, tigers, wild cattle, water buffalo, tapirs, and hippopotamuses, Solo Man most likely lived in an open woodland setting that was much cooler than Java today. They created basic flakes and choppers, handheld stone tools, spears or harpoons from bones, daggers from stingray stings, and bowlers or hammer stones from andesite, among other weapons. Solo Man might have been descended from Java Man or at the very least closely related to him. With the invasion of tropical rainforests and the loss of their preferred habitat, which started around 125,000 years ago, the species most likely went extinct. Uncertainty surrounds the cause of the damage to the skulls, which may have been caused by an assault, cannibalism, a volcanic eruption, or the fossilization process. Archaeologists discovered significant wounds in skulls 4 and 6, which they attributed to blunt and cutting instruments. But the fact that they show signs of inflammation and healing indicates that the people most likely survived the altercation. Anthropologists also noted that it was extremely unusual that only the skull caps were discovered, and no teeth were present. They concluded that skulls 4 and 6 at least were the victims of an unsuccessful assault, and that the other skulls where the base had been removed were the result of more successful attempts to slay the victims, assuming that this was done by other humans in order to gain access to and consume the brain. Archaeologists didn't know whether this had been carried out by a nearby Solo River tribe, or by more advanced human beings who would have given evidence of their superior culture by slaying their more primitive fellow man. Nevertheless, they acknowledged that some of the wounds might have actually been caused by the volcanic eruption. If tiger predation was a factor, the absence of the rest of the skeleton could be explained by the fact that tigers typically only leave the head, because it contains the least amount of meat. The Ngandong Homo erectus fossil materials were also harmed during excavation, cleaning, and preparation, particularly skulls 1 and 9. What conclusions should be drawn from the young Indonesian hominin fossils found in the Solo River? It is shown that classic and evolved Homo erectus belong to two different clades or even categories. Does Homo erectus represent different species of hominids? The question of what caused human evolution will likely always be speculative. This re-evaluation of Homo erectus raises the question of the potential existence of two different species, insofar as a chronological chasm separates these two categories. The multi-regionalism hypothesis within Homo is still up for debate, but the convergent point of view sheds new light on it. To understand the subspecies and its variation, it is still crucial to bridge the gap between individual specimens and speciation. It is another stage in the survey in the paleontological records, which is really an open question that can only be solved by arbitrary nomenclatural choices. However, it presents a chance to re-examine an idea that was widely held many years ago, when there were fewer human fossils than there are now.